Great. Mm-hmm. And so now you've been here two weeks. Uh, it's been kind of a whirlwind. I mean, it started off with some very busy days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So what have you done so far? I think it was... Well, it started out pretty much with the feria. Uh-huh. Right. Getting ready for the feria. Uh-huh. We to a market, a, a kind of hippie market or something. Yeah. So we first participated in that. Uh, we contributed with making some, some things to sell there, to some foods, some you know, natural foods. Right. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, and while doing that, we learned to use the, um, the oven, like the... The wood-fired oven. The wood-fired oven. Yep. And um, Lorraine uh, kitchen. Right. The wood, <laughs> wood-fired stove. Yep. So that was very interesting. Uh, we also soon learned that you have some chickens and uh, that you collect the, the eggs from them and I'd never done that. And really? No, never. Wow, that's great. Uh, I didn't so know. we had to feed them too. Uh, what else? Uh, and then here. the tianguis. Oh, the tianguis. That right. was quite an experience. We and that was to... like two days later. So. Yeah. Yeah. So we went there and we also we're interested in in knowing what it is it's this market that is organized once a week with natural products that come from local um, producers so we went there we bought this this was very interesting we bought the nata i don't know the name in english oh that's right we went to buy the nata the nata uh, this milk product some some kind of dairy product dairy product uh, with which we made uh, after that the ghee Mm-hmm. and the butter. Mm-hmm. I'd never done that and I was fascinated to see how it's made. Yeah, how, I, it is, how easy it is, really. How easy it is to, to get something as natural and tasty like that. And uh, cheap. And cheap too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we have the spa day. Spa day. Oh, good. the spa day was yeah. awesome. Tell me about spa day. Uh, well, we were, well, we started getting ready early in the morning by feeding the sauna with fire. Um, you're not very happy with how your sauna works, you told me. Terrible design. <laughs> oh. It's my design and my redesign and my redesign and now I'm going to make a good one. <laughs> you learn in the process. I'm learning. Yeah. So, okay, with this uh, little flaws it has, <laughs> we were feeding fire for like five hours, I yeah. think. And after that, it was totally worth it. Yeah. Uh, it hit up to over 50 52. Celsius. Um, we spent there, I don't know, a couple of hours mm-hmm. yeah. drinking tea mm-hmm. and, and talking about life and death. Mm-hmm. Life, death, and everything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, okay. And then regular maintenance here at the house and mm-hmm. in the different buildings that are here at the Bosque. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. We also learned some things about um, uh, recycling and reusing of organic. Um, uh, waste, waste, waste. Ra- waste. Yeah. Um, well, we saw the solar system mm-hmm. batteries. Yep, um, you worked on the solar system. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, yeah. sir. Of course. Yar. <laughs> That's part of the deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we started getting ready for the weekend. We cooked some empanadas. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah, Argentinian empanadas. Argentinian yep. empanadas. All right. What else? Pizza. Some pizza. Yeah, we didn't make the pizza, but. Uh, the cake. The cake. Oh, the, yeah. Both we cakes. Had a, a little, yeah. Both cakes. I burned the first one. I burned the, the first cake. But, well. Things happen. At yeah, least you didn't happen. have to try three times. Yeah. Normally, when we do things here, we fail the first time a little bit, a lot. Second time's okay. Third time's good. So, in this case, it only took two times. Two times. Yep. That was great. Yep. And also, <laughs> it took me a while to learn how to, to light a fire. To light a fire. To light a fire. Right. But then I started doing it with only one match, and that's like my... Great goal. Of the yeah. <laughs> so, I feel complete. <laughs> Yay. Um, so, actually, a lot of new things have been happening here for you. Yeah. Uh, being wow. in camera, being behind camera, I... I suck yeah. at that, <laughs> That's but <true>. well. <laughs> That's one of the odd things about the whole experiment, is being in front of the camera and behind the camera. We all get better at it. Yep. It's fun. Um, and we uh, went to buy the, the chicks, the new chicks. Right. This so week. it's good to have more chicks. Mm-hmm. In this case, they're baby chickens. Mm-hmm. Baby chickens. We yep. should show one on camera now. Uh, well, no. we'll, we'll toss in a clip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, they are so cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for your contribution. Yeah. Uh, these folks uh, paid for the little chicks to be here, and those are going to grow up and give us more eggs. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs>
that was our contribution to the bosque uh, in small, exchange yeah. for food and roof. And, and letting us be here and learn new things. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And what other things have you been up to while you're here? Um, what else? I said uh, cooking. Cooking. was like a very, very important part of each day. Yeah, a lot of food. Because we learned that it takes it takes some more time to, to prepare, to, to plant food for each day, mm -hmm. to prepare it, because nothing here is processed. So it makes you like more thoughtful about what you eat right. and how you eat it and yeah. with whom. And right, we're not just opening cans of stuff. No. Right. And, and eating it all processed. And it right. makes us like more conscious about the yeah. act of eating itself. Yeah, so. very common domestic tasks here take two hours or three hours mm -hmm. maybe. Not only cooking, also laundry. Uh, oh, laundry. Taking a bath is basically the sauna. Mm -hmm. and I don't know what else. And yeah, cleaning, because we you clean with natural products as well. And when he mentioned the laundry, well, it was quite a task itself because yeah. we had to, you know, move this thing, this stick that you used to, <laughs> to move the clothes. So, yeah, yeah I tight. think that's something really an important issue. And, and one of the things that people come here learn is that as we imagine a more self-sustainable lifestyle, as we imagine doing more things ourselves, mm -hmm. as we imagine being less dependent on oil-based systems, we've got to realize there's a huge labor cost mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's. There is. And, and so if we want to do that ourselves, then we have to sign on for spending a lot of time doing things mm -hmm. we don't normally do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and we can also expand that view to worldwide and realize a lot of people are doing this work for us. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. whether it's building a phone, which is a colossally interesting thing to think about. Yeah. How many people have to work how many hours at what rate of labor mm -hmm. to build a phone. Total. But almost everything, our clothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so I think that's one of the benefits that, that you can receive or that I've also received in doing this experiment in the Bosque is, is realizing the value of, of human energy and human labor mm -hmm. in reference to the oil-fueled world we're used to. Mm -hmm. So, cool. Yeah, it makes me think also that uh, it's like ridiculous to go to the gym or try to, to look for, <laughs> for activities outside of your normal life when you're doing this kind of things all day. You almost don't need to, to do anything besides that. Yeah. yeah. Also, uh, walking from one building to another. Yes, that <laughs> takes too. time. Even if you want yeah. to go to the bathroom, you have to walk a block at least. So. That is true. That, and that's uh, part of the design of how I've laid out the Bosque so far, mm -hmm. is things are far apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you forget something in a building, okay, now you're walking five minutes back mm -hmm. to get it, five minutes back to return to mm -hmm. the thing you were starting to do. That's yeah. ten minutes lost. And that's something I deal with all the time. I'm continuing to design the processes here, and I'm not sure I always like how I've done things. Because, uh, yeah, it's not always convenient. No, but, but that's it's, part it's of interesting, the... Yeah. It's part of the country life. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. and it's part of the experiment. It's not only here in Bosque, it's pretty much everyone who owns a big property yeah. has to yeah. deal with that. Now, there's hardly an electricity here. Mm -hmm. How's that been? Um, well... Um, I know a little bit about energy. I realize um, you use it very efficiently. Um, the only electricity you spend is mostly for lightning, and a little bit of uh, charging the computer maybe or cell phones, but very smartly. You don't use it for heating or cooling, which are the most expensive tasks. Mm -hmm. and, and AC is very, very demanding on yeah. the power. <laughs> Yeah. and also a stove and a fridge and everything uh, so here yeah you have a very small system and you get along with it we've discussed it previously and you've told me that you don't care for going bigger you actually want to go more efficient and right. I find that very interesting I mean you don't need more than you have right now it's like what how many watts uh, 340 watts of capture, that's mm -hmm. 340 watts of panels, <clears throat> which is almost nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't run anything big. Mm -hmm. And the, the goal, like you say, is conservation. Mm -hmm. Use less. Mm -hmm. And especially, even, and I might expand it. I might, I might get more panels. But I might get more panels but not get more batteries. Mm -hmm. So that during the day we have more energy. Mm -hmm. But at night we use less. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of part of the live, with, live in the light idea. Mm -hmm. live with the light, live in the light, some kind of slogan. And so we use the sun when we have it, 
And then at night, we get back to basics. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying we have to go totally dark, because mm -hmm. darkness, I mean, the nights are long. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's okay. We can have some, you know, we can have some LED lights and everything. Mm -hmm. And we can use the best of technology now. Mm -hmm. But we really don't need that much. Right. right. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, of course, uh, water is um, fluvial water. I don't know. Uh, rainwater. 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 Fluvial water, rainwater, yeah. Uh -huh. um, well, the, I'm not going to say it's sufficient because the capture system is essentially pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty much a roof and a, how do you call it? Kind of let those uh, uh, gutters. 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 Yeah. You're better at Spanish now. <laughs> I know, I get so confused because I'm, I'm, I, I think in Spanglish. I'm confused yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's just a couple of gutters on the roof. The capture is really simple. Uh, storage is maybe a bit expensive, yeah. but... Well, it's also a thing in which you don't have huge storage, but you use very little. Mm -hmm. also. Right. And that's part of the goal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah. you think, coming from the city, you think it's going to be hard, it's going to be a big shock, but it's not really. You just have to get used to certain, a couple of things. Small, Maybe in my change opinion. Some habits. Well, in my I, opinion, it's small. But. I, I, well, I think also you're, you're exceptional people. And we get all kinds of people through here. Mm -hmm. So there are people who come directly from the city to here. Yeah, you should and not it expect, is a shock. Mm -hmm. You should not expect a hotel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. It's not a resort, it's not a hotel. <laughs> yes, but I understand yeah. what you say because we, we're uh, traveling in this special way in which we try to, to maximize the energy or the resources that we use and try to, to use as little as possible because we have to make them last. Uh, we also have to, to maximize our space because we have very little. So we, tend to, we try to have um, as little as we use, nothing more than that. Uh, so maybe we're, we were like training to be in a place like this during <laughs> right. our first yeah. right. months. Right. For you, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I've, I've seen, we've had over 3,000 people come through here. Mm -hmm. So I have seen the absolute gamut. Mm -hmm. I've seen people like you who are already 95% prepared to be here. Mm -hmm. And then I've seen people who are 99% and they come here and they want to be cavemen and are critical that we have anything at all. That's very rare. But um, and then we've had, we have had people who have come here and they've left after two nights and they're like I cannot handle this this wow. is just extreme mm -hmm. and so it's really been fun for me to learn from them mm -hmm. about this kind of range of human experience with technology and industrial society mm -hmm. but yeah it's not a shock for you guys because you guys are already on the path right? <laughs> so yeah. you're doing great <laughs> and and I'm learning from you you're learning from me this is the kind of thing I love to see in the Boston. Mm -hmm. You should be the anthropologist here. <laughs> <laughs> we can all be anthropologists. <laughs> yeah. And lately I've been thinking about philosophy a lot. And mm -hmm. I think we all need to be philosophers. We all are philosophers. Mm -hmm. We're just either good ones or bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to up our game on that. Anthropology in particular is interesting to me as far as communities go. Mm -hmm. Because as you know, I have bigger goals. Mm -hmm. And I've studied communities. And I look at how the personal dynamics work, not just among a few people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in terms of what social structures we create, what social contracts we make, what ethics we implement in our societies. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of interested in getting into your brain about that <laughs> as you travel. You know, you're thinking about how does this society work? Mm -hmm. What are their values exactly. and all that? Oh. Yeah. So, what are their unspoken <clears throat> rules, mostly? Yeah, yes, unwritten rules. So as we think about the Bosque from an anthropological perspective, or the things you see as you travel, uh, we think about social contracts, about ethics, the things that are, that are kind of the base culture, the, 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 the base behind the culture, because mm -hmm. we, we get distracted by the things, you know, the, the flashy part. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot about, as I design a space and I invite people into it, what mm -hmm. are the ethics we live by, what are the social contracts we're making? Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys think about that as far as, you know, what you want in your lives? Whether it's what you see here or what maybe you want to create in your lives? Mm, well, something that we've heard a lot since we arrived here at the Bosque is uh, the importance of rules and how societies or communities or groups um, live uh, regulated or organized by these rules. And of course, I don't know if everyone thinks like that, but I think it's like a very common thing. To, to understand that you need some certain like access or or things that 
organized social life. From a framework. Yes, exactly, like a framework. So that can differ from one culture to another, but it's like you always need this structure to organize life. So the importance of it, I don't know. Um, what else do we think about social organizations? Um, I don't know. Uh, it would be much easier to respond to this after we finish our trip. <laughs> <laughs> and we've had more experience Probably. and we've learned more. Uh, if I had to say, like, um, starting a new society, um, I don't think I would be able to start from scratch. Uh, I would basically look for a place, maybe a country, where I like the society and try to start from there and build upon that. Um, and I cannot say which place because I would like to see much more. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question and, and I've seen that question online of like, where is the best place you could go that mm -hmm. would, would be uh, compatible with your own values? Where mm -hmm. could you live as you wish to live? Mm -hmm. And it's a, often not very good answers. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, like, um, also a common question is, what is the best country to start a self-sustaining land or something? Mm -hmm. um, there's pretty much not one <laughs> that will allow you to live completely off the grid. I mean, pretty much in every country you have to pay, at least you have to pay taxes for the land. Mm -hmm. sure. And for that you have to get cash, and for that you have to sell something, and you're pretty much in the system by yeah. doing that. Yeah. Actually, escaping the system is fairly difficult, mm -hmm. and as you know, I've done okay at that. I've made my attempt, mm -hmm. and um, now I'm even trying to reintegrate with the system by creating a nonprofit, mm -hmm. which is an official entity. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's an interesting struggle that I think a lot of people are in. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are very aware that the world is not sustainable as it is, mm -hmm. and they're not comfortable in it. Mm -hmm. So then the questions are, yeah. how do we create our own worlds? how to create the world mm -hmm. in which we want to live. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yeah, a lot of people coming from the cities, they have this dream that they're going to buy a piece of land and make a self-sustaining life. And it's, it's not so easy. <laughs> it's, I would say it's almost not possible at this point, uh, being 100% self-sustainable. Uh, like we said earlier, we don't realize, but you say we live as kings. Uh, like common things like buying shoes or buying salt. So, uh, it's, there's many things that you don't think about, that you're already in there, you're in the system already. Mm -hmm. And once you cut off, you not only cut off from food, water and energy, you're also cutting off from many basic Oil, things. Oil, uh, yeah. glasses or... Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we've had great conversations about that. I love talking with people like you because, because you're thinking about these things already. Mm -hmm. And so when we when we look at systems here in the Bosque and choices, we're not having to argue about it or I'm not having to explain yeah. every damn idea. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of already booted up mentally to mm -hmm. understand. Okay, these are the issues we're dealing with as a world. Mm -hmm. And so then we can talk about. Okay, well. What do we do day to day? Mm -hmm. Right, you know, right. You, you have a final goal, and I, I see your ideal, and I very much have the same ideal, but I know it's not uh, an overnight change. Yeah. Uh, it's like I said, it's pretty much impossible to do it today, but you have to make small changes mm -hmm. every day to yeah. get closer and closer to that goal. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. One thing I've been very happy with you guys about is you've been up for documenting it document the conversation. Mm -hmm. We also write a lot online, so those conversations become ones that other people can respond to. Mm -hmm. It's not just some people isolated in the forest. Yeah. Yeah. It's us in the forest experimenting and sharing that with the world. And thank you so much for being up for that. That's <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So, as you've been here for almost two weeks, what has been surprising or uncomfortable? What's been weird for you, if anything? surprising or uncomfortable I wouldn't say surprising because we've used them before but the compost toilets tell me about the composting toilets <laughs> composting toilets uh, well uh, you basically go and do what you have to do and uh, in this toilet thing like uh, uh, that hasn't flow any water in it 
so you just go and have to then uh, pour spray. some spray some um, wood uh, sawdust. You put some uh, sawdust. Sawdust. Okay. Sawdust. okay. And just that. Um, There's no flushing the toilet. Right. Exactly. There's no flushing the toilet. So about that, you may think if you've never used one of them that it's uh, maybe non-hygienic or not clean or whatever. But uh, the the thing is that you used it to to com to compost it or to decompose it, and then uh, use with the plants and whatever. So that's been something like yeah. new. Um, so surprise. Somewhat new. Yeah, most people think before knowing them that it's going to be a huge stink all over the place. Yeah. It's actually actually not if you do it the right way. Um, in here, it's there's pretty much no odor on the outside. There is some when you're doing your thing, when, when you, you open the lid. You open the lid, yeah. Yeah, uh, it but just... it's bearable, and well, we understand it's for mm -hmm. change for better. Uh, one thing about the little things that you don't realize, it's very hard to wash the dishes without any hot water. All oh, right. <laughs> it's a just a little thing, but. In the daily life, uh, it's one small shock. Maybe. Especially if you use a lot of oil or butter or greasy things when right. you cook, which is not something that happens here because you try to use as little as uh, necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it, it may look like a big problem, but it cannot. It mm -hmm. maybe it's you can overpass shock. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is exactly the kind of small details we, we deal with here and. Um, there's a phrase in English, the devil is in the details, mm -hmm. and I'm not quite sure what that means, but, but I'm very interested in, as we try and solve these world problems, the huge things, and even the, the big conflicts we have as people, mm -hmm. let's get down to the details and mm -hmm. let's talk about, okay, do we have hot water to wash the dishes, and does that matter, mm -hmm. and how long in humanity have we been eating without hot water to wash the dishes? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And, and so we can set up little tiny cultural differences in how we do that. And maybe we should have hot water. We have hot water in one building. We don't have it in this one. Mm -hmm. We've only got hot water in one building here. Yeah. And that's solar hot, heat, hot water heated. Yeah. We could buy propane and have it here. And you mentioned a very important thing. It's choices about what foods we eat. Mm -hmm. You know, and if they have more oil in them, we could even talk about what kind of dishes. Like... And we could have bamboo leaves and fill it with your oily curry and eat that. Mm -hmm. And then we throw the bamboo leaf away. And so there's all these magical solutions mm -hmm. we have to the, to the kind of brain teasers that we're surrounded by mm -hmm. as we so. think about this. And I'm so happy you guys appreciate that because that's the fun of it. That's the game. Mm -hmm. And it isn't always comfortable. And no, so, yeah, you're washing with cold water. Mm -hmm. That's okay. And yeah. No problem at uh, all. <laughs> there's another thing that, uh, well, the diet here is maybe not the one you have, mo not the one most people have in cities. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You're close to being a vegetarian, uh, and that might be difficult for some people, but it was no big deal for us. No, not at, not at all. And it's not vegetarian because we eat uh, eggs every day yep. and have dairy products and we every have once meat in a while. Every now and then. We ate meat a couple of times and it's just fine. Yep. But you don't need to have meat right. every day. It's not really necessary. But, yeah. And you have, we've had like very very tasty dishes here. Yeah, but many people do think that you need to have meat every day. Mm -hmm. right. And this is kind of the middle position I take. Is like. I want to, when people come here, I want to show vegetarians that maybe we can eat meat or animal products mm -hmm. like honey, for example, mm -hmm. responsibly, uh, you know, which vegans are against, or eggs in a way that's sustainable and we have happy animals that are domesticated and live with humans as part of the system. Mm -hmm. and, and I want them to see that maybe there's ways to do that in a way that's not evil. Mm -hmm. And I also want meat eaters to come here and, and realize, oh, wow, I can be completely full, I can eat all I want, mm -hmm. I can have hearty, heavy, awesome food, mm -hmm. and we don't have to have an industrial meat system supporting it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's kind of a middle position. No, um, actually I think it's important for people like us. We, are, we eat meat occasionally, uh, but learning that you can really live like that it makes you think a lot about your diet and your habits. And, I don't know, yeah. maybe one day I'll be a vegetarian <laughs> after maybe. having this experience because, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had people come here and I, I used to raise rabbits and, and we would kill a rabbit in front of meat eaters mm -hmm. 
and some of them will be like, I'm not sure I want to eat that. Right. But that's lunch. Yeah, yeah. many people think that meat <laughs> comes from the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or and like, it doesn't. Yeah. When we bought the, the chickens, I thought like, well, this is really cute. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. <laughs> but well, uh, this is another discussion, so yeah. yeah. Well, and luckily we use the chickens for eggs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's a, a kind of a partnership with a domesticated animal mm-hmm. that we've evolved with for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So each they're case happy, is they're different. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. So we work on it. Mm-hmm. But this is uh these are the details we gotta work on. Mm-hmm. And yeah. a lot of people get very locked into there's one solution, there's one right answer. And the mosque is a very experimental place culturally. Mm-hmm. So when I say, you know, it's a cultural laboratory, mm-hmm. I'm not kidding, and you know that now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and, so. and it isn't like Brian land of Brian's way. Mm-hmm. I, I don't always know what I think. I'm always researching. I'm always listening to people. I'm affected by everybody who comes here. I'm reading, and I'm thinking, how can we tweak that? How can we tweak that? Mm-hmm. And then other people are coming in and suggesting their ideas. Mm-hmm. So we're getting more specialists through, which is great. Mm-hmm. And, and they come in, and they know more than I do. And so I'm perfectly happy to listen. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and we build a culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, another shock that someone could have coming here uh, is that most people, most especially coming from the U.S. or Canada, they assume that Mexico is very hot on year long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a very good point. It's not. What is that? <laughs> yeah. Mexico is a big country, of course. And here we're in an altitude. We're like 2,000 meters above sea level. 2,200, I think, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we came here in winter. It does get cold at night. It's still hot during the day. Um, we didn't have any problems. We slept in our car with nice sleeping bags mm-hmm. like we usually do. But if you expect to have a hot night, yeah, like a right. tropical night, <laughs> yeah. no, it's yeah. not yeah. the case. You're not in for that. <laughs> People gotta look at the packing list, look at the graph for the climate, yeah. and also when you look at that graph for the climate, realize. You're going to be staying in in houses or, or huts that mm-hmm. don't have any heating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, really, be prepared for the climate, mm-hmm. um, and that's a good lesson for people. Now, you guys don't need much lessons. You guys are tough. You guys are prepared. Oh, we always need lessons. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we can always learn something. We keep learning. Yeah. <laughs> but but trust me, there's people who come here and yeah, they don't have a light. They don't have any warm clothing. Oh yeah, and the it's lights. Like, uh, Headlights are. Like yeah, yeah. There must. is no light. Here. <laughs> yeah. It's not the city. So you can stress that enough. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And maybe I should just have more lights to lend people. I've thought about having a survival pack actually that I just <laughs> when people arrive here, I hand them their survival pack and I say, Okay, here's what you need. We'll go through it on video and we'll say, Here's what you need to survive. This is a new world you're in. <laughs> Have fun. And, and it's educational, and they'll have fun, mm-hmm. you know. So. Oh, and you listen. If you listen to coyotes at night, don't be scared. They won't do anything to you. You will never see them. You ju- right. You'll just hear yeah. them saying. So, were you scared of the coyotes? Yes, I was very scared of the coyotes. <laughs> I like Every when people night. are scared. Doing yeah. their thing. Howling. But I never, yeah. But I never saw them. I yeah. never saw yeah. one. And if you see one, it's probably just going to run away. Yes. Yeah. You're much bigger than. They're not <laughs> aggressive, so. When I first moved here. Uh, I came with one dog, and the coyotes would actually come up to the house and look at me. Yeah. And it was kind of cool. I loved it. <laughs> they would look at me, and I would look at them. They would look at me, I would look at them. I'm like, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a gun? Do you have a gun? <laughs> <laughs> and then they would go away. And it's like, okay, now this is your territory. And they have all this territory because you yes. hear them all night. Yeah. And they're in packs and they're far from each other and they're singing to each other. Mm-hmm. They're saying things like, hey, is there any rabbits over there? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> have you heard any owls? No, no. Not, oh, no, not yet. I'm sad because <laughs> they're really pretty to hear. Oh. Woo, woo, woo. No. Yeah. No, it, I haven't. It, it is interesting uh, to spend some time in real nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. We saw and, lots of lizards. Yeah, really. lots of lizards, some spiders, but not very big spiders. So. Yeah, and that's one thing I, I, I'm so happy and so privileged to be able to live in a place like this, where I get to live with trees, I get to actually plant trees, mm-hmm. watch them grow. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, you know? lots and lots of birds. I don't know anything about birds, but <laughs> there's so many species here. Yeah. And yeah. so different from, yeah. I do have a bird book, but you know, 
some people come here and they're like, what's that species of bird? And I'm like, I don't know. Birdie? And, yeah. and guess what? That bird doesn't know its name either. <laughs> so I don't feel that bad. But there are many kinds of birds here. Yeah. We're also doing a lot of work here uh, to increase wildlife levels, uh -huh. to provide more water, more protected space, more habitat. Mm -hmm. So this is less of a manicured forest, and we're making it wilder. Mm -hmm. which is very exciting. Of course, sometimes wildlife is annoying. We'll come in your house. We'll fight with your dog. Mm -mm. But that's part of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So uh, another question is, uh, you're here when there's very few people here. Mm -hmm. How has that been for you? Because sometimes, and you've seen this online, there's pictures, there's videos of a bunch of people here. It's so exciting. And sometimes I feel kind of bad if people are going to come here and there's not like a big group. You've been okay? Mm, uh, yeah. We've been okay. Uh, I think it's easier for us because we're a couple. Yes. Uh, if we feel lonely, we talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. uh, I assume it can be hard if you're traveling alone and you expect a lot of company. <clears throat> um, sometimes, I don't know, people want to spend time with people at some point in the day and want to be alone yeah. another mm -hmm. part of the day. Um, but yeah, we didn't have any issues with that. Also, we were told before coming here that there are some um, uh, parts of the year in which there are a lot of people here coming because, I don't know, it's it's uh, summertime or holidays in their home countries, so they, they have the opportunity to travel. And uh, there are some other parts of the year in which there's very few people, so we knew that it might be uh, the case. Um, so, yeah, and I'm more like a small group person cool. so I'm comfortable with okay it. well that's important to me because I'm always trying to set expectations because mm -hmm. we've talked and you know I'm trying to build something pretty big mm -hmm. I'm trying to build a whole small town and a community and all this stuff so mm -hmm. I'm happy we set expectations well mm -hmm. I'm also happy a lot of people they use the opportunity to to have some alone time with nature yeah. mm -hmm. you know to actually be with trees and nature um, and sometimes of course they have time with me which is interesting I'm a strange individual I guess um, and then other times I'm happy when there's groups here of 20 or more people mm -hmm. from all over the world. And I don't even know what's going on at that point because <laughs> they're all having their own storms of thought and things. And what am I thinking now is that I want to teach them to document that and publish it mm -hmm. so that it's almost like a show. Mm -hmm. And they're all really philosophically exchanging their worldviews in this bizarre space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that so, might be interesting too. So. Very interesting. Maybe some yeah. other time. Yeah. And now you have been on camera some. And have you been mostly comfortable or have you felt invaded by the camera? Uh, I don't know. We were told that we were going to be recorded yeah. uh, at some point. Um, I, personally, in the beginning, yes, I felt like it was a strange presence. Uh, but then I got used to it. Yeah, um, we've been yeah. comfortable so far. Also, it's always been in times that when we're working together on something or discussing something. So it's been in those opportunities and not when I'm alone in the bathroom or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's not, I it's hope. Not, yeah. it's <laughs> well, you didn't know about the hidden camera? <laughs> yeah. No, but I don't know. Yeah. It's been okay. Well, that's been cool. Yeah, and you guys are great on camera. And that is something we're very honest with people about. And not everyone who comes here has to be on camera. There's mm -hmm. various roles to have, but mm -hmm. it's been great that you guys have been willing to share your experience, you know, your travels and everything. Mm -hmm. And what's also cool is that your friends and family get to see you being here. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course. They get to see your philosophy. They get to know you in a, in a deeper way, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes, because people get to know other people in this kind of situations in another uh, sense, or you get to know other um, aspects of the person uh, when you're traveling like this and sharing experiences and everything. So yeah, it's something new. They know us, but they don't know us in our whole. <laughs> <So, yeah. laughs> Ultimately, we're all alone. And I don't know if we even know ourselves. Hmm. Other people have their visions. Those are true. Mm -hmm. They're not true. So yeah, yeah it's, it's complex. It's very complex. Mm -hmm. Well, I personally have enjoyed having you guys here immensely. Thank you. Yeah. We've enjoyed it too. So that's what travel is about. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I can't thank you enough. Adios. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Hasta la vista, baby. Yar. <laughs> thank you, Brian. Okay. Thank you. Thank See you for you. having us. Mm -hmm. Yar. It's been great.